Hello there, welcome back and welcome to part 82 in my build log series of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today we are finishing off the lifeboats and by that I don't mean fitting, as you can see, they're not fitted to the model quite yet. Uh, what I mean is finishing off the actual physical model of the lifeboats. So we're going to be fitting things like the decals today, the, uh, the white star pennants, uh, stuff like that. We're also going to be adding the grab lines. We're going to be sealing them up with a coat of, of, of matte varnish just to sort of lock in all that detail. Uh, we'll also get the davits done. Here is a davit here. Uh, and I'm not going to I'm not going to show that in too much detail because really it is just a bit more of the same. It's, you know, it's cutting out resin parts, painting them. It's very much rinse and repeat, same process for the lifeboats. So I'll show some pictures of those at the end, but I'm probably not going to show too much of the actual detail. But anyway, uh, most of this will be covered as the video progresses anyway. So without any further ado, let's crack on. Right, now just on to the next part of the lifeboats, which is of course adding the pendants. So these were the identification plates for the lifeboats. Uh, there were four things in total. Firstly, there was this kind of thing. Uh, this is the White Star Line pennant flag. Uh, and of course, before you start planning on how to rob the house, this isn't genuine, of course. These are incredibly rare. So uh, this is one I made out of some mild steel a couple of years ago, but it's quite nice anyway. But this is essentially the sort of thing that there would have been on each side and each end of each lifeboat, four on each. Uh, a White Star Line flag. In addition to that, there was a nameplate, and on one side of the ship, these nameplates would have said Liverpool, and on the other side, they would have said SS Titanic. There was also a boat number. Port side had even number boats, starboard side had odd. And lastly, there was this plaque here. Now, this stated the length of the boat, in this case, 30 foot. It also said, stated the draft, and it also stated its cubic capacity. Now, most of these things are correct. The problem is, however, the decal sheet I have is very good in every respect, except the flags don't always point the right direction. The way that these flags were orientated is the flagpole always faced towards the front of Titanic. So in this case, this one is correct. The flagpole is facing towards the front of Titanic and the actual flag itself is flying aft. However, here you can see the flagpole is actually pointing to the aft of Titanic and the flag is flying forward. That's incorrect. What we actually want is for both of these flags to be orientated the same direction. So I've been sort of racking my brains on how best to get over this problem, because with the decal kit as we have it, there isn't a way of getting this completely right. Either the flags will be in the wrong direction, like they are here, or the flags or, or the, uh, the names will not be right, so the inboard facing names should always say Liverpool and the outboard facing names should always say Titanic. So whatever I do, something will be wrong. Either we'll have flags the wrong direction or we'll have Liverpool and Titanic on the same side of the boat. That's not right either. Or we'll have the number of the boat pointing the wrong way. Again, not right. So there's always going to be something wrong. What I have decided to do, though, is the front decals are correct. So this one is correct in that it's inboard, it's got the flag pointing in the right direction, it's got the number in front of it, it's got the boat uh, capacity symbol on it, and it also has Liverpool above it. On the other side, this one's also correct, it's got the boat number, it's got the flag facing the right way, and it says SS Titanic. Now, what I'm going to do, okay, is I am going to fit a decal for the starboard side boat, so the opposite boat, at the end here. I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to put a different one on with the flag facing the other way. And what I will do is I'm going to cut off the boat number. So you can see here, or maybe you can't, this says 12, this is boat 12. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove this one and I'll put it on a different boat and I'll cut off 12. Uh, and then I'll find a new decal that will work here that says Liverpool has the flag facing the other direction and I will remove the number. Now, this is about as good a compromise as I can come up with because at least 
all of the flags will be in the right direction. And they're the most visible bit, so they're the bit that I am most concerned about, if I'm honest. Um, the issue, of course, is that we'll then only have a boat number at the front when it should be at each end. But unfortunately, we're sort of working with what we've got, and that's the best thing I can come up with. So we'll crack on with this sort of reworky stuff now. Right, <clears throat> so here is the first of the boats which is completely done, and you'll see the solution that I've come up with. So here is the bow, and here is the stern, and you'll see that now the decals do genuinely face the correct way. Uh, the flag has its pole facing forward, and the actual flag facing aft. Same at the aft end of the boat as well. In addition to that, I very much doubt I'll get this in focus, but we can give it a whirl. In addition to that, the inboard boats have the word Liverpool above the flag, as is correct, and they also have the marker telling you the details of the boats. Where I've had to make the concession is I've removed the numeral from the boats at the back. So on the real ship, this would be slightly shifted forward and there would be a number there. Same on the other side. Unfortunately, because these decals aren't quite right, I've sacrificed the numeral in order to give me the rest of the accuracy. So we do have a numeral at the front and this is boat number seven, which is duplicated on both sides. Happy days. But we don't have a numeral at the back. But that now gives us about as close a degree of accuracy as I can get with this decal set. So I'm pretty happy with this on the whole. Uh, one thing just to, ch to note is that we do need to move this side up a little bit because you can see they're not quite aligned. And that's actually quite a good little check to do before they fully dry. There we go, you see. Lovely. They do look absolutely brilliant, actually. Once they're done, I don't know, they, they, just because this is such fine detail, they do look absolutely cracking. Uh, so this one's all done. We will uh, let it dry off, pop it to one side, uh, and then I'll add the grab lines. So I've got 13 others to do now. So I thought I'd do one boat with you all just watching. Uh, we've got here some micro set. Uh, and this is a sort of product that you can use, and it just helps the adhesion of decals and stuff. It's good for that kind of thing. Uh, it does have a partner product, Microsol, which I'm not using today, but it's also worth having in your arsenal of modelling bits. Microsol softens decals, which makes them much more able to sort of float and, 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 and shape themselves into complex shapes. Because this isn't a particularly complex shape, I'm not using it today. I'm only using Microset. Um, as you can see, we've got our couple of decals just in a pool of sort of lukewarm water, just softening up. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is on the zone where these decals are going to be applied, I am just adding a little bit of micro set. And what that'll do is it'll mean that the micro set is stuck underneath the decal when I come to apply it. And of course, that will be helpful because it'll help the decal to stick down. Now, let's just have a see if these are ready. I've left these, normally I wouldn't submerge decals completely, I'd just sort of hold them in some water with my pliers. But these seem particularly stubborn and they, they, they like a good long soak before they come off for some reason. Not entirely sure why. Uh, and as you can see, these are still not quite ready to move yet, so I'll pop them back in the water. Right, let's give them another try. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold my piece of paper very close to the site where I want it. I can feel that decal moving now. There we go, she's sliding. You'll just feel that eventually they start to slide quite naturally. So I'm going to use my tweezers and I'm just going to slide the decal onto the boat. Now this is a good example of where I've got a little bit too much liquid underneath the decal, so it's hard, it's sort of floating when I don't want it to. So I'm using here just a cotton bud, and that just soaks up all of the available water very, very swiftly, which is exactly what we're after. 
There we get the decal in the right place, and that looks about perfect to me. And now I'm just going to go over it with my cotton bud once again and squash all that water out from underneath it. And then, just to finish the job, belt and braces, you know me, I'm just going to paint over the top with a little bit more microset. And that will just absolutely guarantee me a nice strong bond between the decal and the boat. And there you go. And we'll do the other side now. Same principle. First of all, paint a little bit of microset on the area where you want the decal to be. And aim the decal onto the boat. Slide it off your piece of paper. And there we have it. That looks pretty good actually, and we'll just make sure by checking either side that these are level with each other, which they seem to be. Lovely. So now, same as before, squash all of the water out, and now I'm just going to go over and pop a little bit more micro set on there just to guarantee a nice strong bond. There we go, final check. That's pretty good. The numbers are maybe a tiny bit off from each other. There we go. As you can see, the aft is also lovely. So there we go, nice and simple. As you can see, it's a time-consuming operation, so I'll do the rest on time-lapse. Uh, but that is the idea. Right, I'm just about to spray the insides of my 25 foot cutter boats. Uh, for the insides, I'm using Humbrol Matte 63, which is a sort of sandy, browny, yellowy kind of colour. Um, and once that's done and dried, I will remove the masking tape and I will pick out the gunnels in Humbrol Matte 62, the slightly darker brown that I've used on the gunnels of the 30 foot boats as well. Right, so we're now just adding our grab lines to the lifeboats. And I've done quite a few already, as you can see. Here is one on the 30-foot boat, just waiting to have its second side done. And they do really add a certain something to it. it makes them look a lot more sort of real. Uh, but I'm now just going to demonstrate for you on a 25-foot cutter. So these are the smaller boats. 
which were not covered because they were always ready to go. Uh, and this specifically is boat number one, which um, is is in some in some ways slightly notorious in Titanic circles because of course this was the boat that was launched with twelve people in a boat made for forty. Um, so notorious, although for all the wrong reasons, unfortunately. And this was incidentally the boat that Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon and his wife and their secretary and a couple of other people besides were in. Uh, so it's got a reasonable history to it. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting some glue onto the end of the grab line and then plonking that down onto the lifeboat at the end. And using some kicker to get it in place. And that's a good starting point because we've now got the grab line in place and we can now sort of work our way along the boat, gradually fixing more and more of the line down. So I'm just adding little beads of glue to various parts of the grab line and just butting them up against the gunnels of the boat to make sure that they're in the right place. Uh, and I am being fairly free-willed with the CA kicker here because it does really help the process. Now, I'll just... The challenges change as you get more of this on. Um, getting the stuff glued down becomes easier, as you might expect. The challenge, of course, though, becomes actually getting the glue underneath. That becomes harder because, of course, the lines are much closer to the side of the boat. So, last couple. And I'm just going to hold that down with some pliers until it dries. And actually, Use a bit of kicker again. You can see that the end is just still poking itself off a little bit, so... There we've got the first of our two grab rails. And here we go, the last little step on this voyage of adventure and discovery was just to paint a layer of varnish onto each of the boats. And of course, what that does is it just locks in all of that detail that we've added up to now. So here we have our full complement of boats, four Engelhart collapsibles at the top. Then we've got the starboard boats, the 25 foot cutters, uncovered, ready for use, and the port boats here. 
And here are the davits. Uh, I haven't really shown much of this because I thought about it, but to, to be honest, it's just more of the same. It's, you know, it's cutting out 3D prints, spraying them black, then spraying them again in white. Uh, and that that's about it, you know, it's it, it really is sort of copy and paste. Um, however, they're, they're nice and pretty. Um, again, you can sort of see the value, I think, in painting things black to start with and then going over with white because it just just means that detail pops out a wee bit more and the sort of nooks and crannies, the white paint, just struggles to penetrate enough that you get dark shadows caused by the black paint underneath. And that is, of course, exactly what we're after. Now, initially, I had thought about picking out some of the davit details uh, in a sort of metallic colour, because, of course, some of this stuff would have been moving parts. There would have been a lead screw here, which would be spun by a handle here. You spin the handle, the lead screw turns, and, of course, that's what manipulates the arm of the davit and allows it either to lean out over the side of the ship or to return inwards to the upright position to stow a boat, or indeed to roll all the way back to pick up an inboard row of boats from inside the boat deck itself. Of course, that was famously an option that was offered, but was not taken up on Titanic. Um, anyway, back to the actual the point I was making. I was going to possibly think about detailing some of these lead screws, um, but from looking at photos and from looking at sort of information I can find on Tinterweb, um, these tended, when at sea, to be covered over uh, with sort of cloth cloth shrouds and things like that. And, you know, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, it's a mechanical part. It needs to stay functional, needs to stay loose and manoeuvrable. Um, and being exposed to salty air and stuff probably would, over time, cause some corrosion. Even with things like brasses or gunmetal parts, you know, even those would... They wouldn't corrode, but they would oxidise. Um, so they wouldn't rust, but they would certainly develop a layer of oxide on top and would probably lead, need re-lubricating more regularly if they were exposed to the elements than if they were covered over by a cloth. So because of that, I am not going to paint or pick out any of the mechanical detail there. The only thing that I might do is, you can see, if the camera will focus, right on the underside you can see the sort of the... the, the um, the rack and pinion style gearing system that was used to allow the davits to rotate. You can see a flat row of gear here, and then the actual davit arm itself also is geared so that as this moves along the lead screw, the entire davit assembly sort of rotates. So if you sort of if you follow my um I'll zoom out, if you follow my craft knife handle. As the lead screw rotates, the davit would rotate along that rack and pinion system there. Uh, and of course, that is a mechanical part, it's a moving part. I doubt it would have been painted, um, and I suspect there will probably have been some grease or some oil, probably grease, some sort of fairly heavy lubricant that would be used to make sure that these were free and able to move whenever called upon. So I might just go and pick out this area here. Not with anything special, but possibly just with a sort of a black wash, uh, that sort of humbral black wash that I've been using throughout a few of the, um, the bits and bobs on the model, just to pick out the area and make it obvious that it is a mechanical moving part of the, uh, of the assembly. But anyway, that's it for the Davids, and indeed that is it for this video. Uh, as I'm sure you've probably guessed, this leaves us now in a position where we've got all the lifeboats done and we've got all the davits done. So all the players, so to speak, are on the field. Um, the anthems have been sung, but they're not quite yet in their final positions. So next episode, we will be positioning and gluing all of these down onto the model. And that will be thoroughly satisfying. So until then... I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, comments, whatever, pop them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. If you have enjoyed this video, do please like and subscribe. If you haven't enjoyed this video, do please like and subscribe. And I do mean that. Um, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.